Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the treatment options for allergic rhinitis. So what are some of the key recommendations? Well, the initial treatment for mild to moderate allergic rhinitis should be an intranasal corticosteroid alone with the use of a second line therapy for moderate to severe disease. Again, so intranasal corticosteroids. Now, compared with first-generation antihistamines, second-generation antihistamines have a better adverse effect profile, and they have less sedation, um, and so that's key there. The adverse effects and higher costs of intranasal antihistamines, as well as uh, their decreased effectiveness compared to intranasal corticosteroids, kind of limit their use as first- or second-line therapy for allergic rhinitis. And that's a key point for the boards. You know, you're going to pick intranasal corticosteroids, not intranasal antihistamines. And although safe for general use, intranasal chromalin is not considered first-line therapy for allergic rhinitis because of its decreased effectiveness at relieving the symptoms of allergic rhinitis and its inconvenient dosing schedule. The uh, nasal saline irrigation is beneficial in treating symptoms of chronic rhinorrhea. And although dust mite allergies are common, um, studies have not found any benefit of using a mite-proof impermeable mattress. And interventions without documenting effectiveness in prevention of allergic rhinitis, including uh, breastfeeding or delayed exposure to solid foods in in infancy, and the use of uh, air filtration symptoms um, has yet to be proven, and it's still under debate. Also, uh, keep in mind that um, the uh, you can also you know select your treatment based upon symptoms. So, patient has um, ocular symptoms, nasopharyngeal itching, sneezing, and rhinorrhea. Well, intranasal corticosteroids and oral antihistamines are going to be your top choice. If the patient um, has only nasopharyngeal itching, sneezing, and rhinorrhea, but no ocular symptoms, then you're going to look at the um, intranasal chromalin as one of your choices. And again, intranasal antihistamines is going to be used before intranasal chromalin. And again, understand if it's only rhinorrhea, then intranasal anticholinergics. Um, And also normal saline irrigation is useful in that case too. Um, some of the other things you want to keep in mind, corticosteroids, side effects, uh, there's bitter aftertaste, burning, epistaxis, headache, nasal dryness, um, rhinitis, um, patients have um, you know, symptoms of throat irritation that are common, and oral antihistamines, they cause dry mouth, sedation, um, and intranasal antihistamines will have a bitter aftertaste and epistaxis and headache are common here. So just to review, while you're uh, treating a patient for allergic rhinitis on the board exam, uh, first understand if it's mild intermittent symptoms, then you can go for a second generation oral or intranasal antihistamine. But if it's mild to moderate, then first line is intranasal corticosteroids. So, you know, the key thing from this podcast is intranasal corticosteroids for mild to moderate. And for severe symptoms, you want to go for intranasal corticosteroids plus an antihistamine Um, and consider lifestyle options Um, and again if symptoms persist then immunotherapy referral um, is going to be one of your other options and as always nasal irrigation, acupuncture, probiotics, herbal preparations may be beneficial in some cases. Thank you for listening to the Comlex podcast. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review podcasts and good luck in your preparation.